Welcome to the Summer 2018 Anime Preview Guide, where today I'm going to walk through over two dozen new anime that aired this season in Summer of 2018, and give you a quick rundown of um, um, just some information on them and what you might want to know. As usual, I am not covering Seasons 2, Seasons 3, Seasons 4, etc. of franchises or otherwise long-running shows. I figure if you haven't seen Season 1, you should do that. And if you've seen Season 1, you know if you're going to watch Season 2 or 3. Also, no anime aimed at, like, really young, like, kindergartners. Uh, because I figure, you know, the vast majority of you are not going to be interested in that either. So, let us move on, going alphabetically through the series, starting with A Hundred Sleeping Princes, one of the several Otome series of the season, meaning it's about hot guys. This is about a young woman who ends up in a fantasy world, kind of an isekai story, uh, and she is releasing hot young men who are trapped in these rings. And this is not focusing quite so much on hot guys, although they're definitely there, but they're, you know, they're not quite as sexualized as in some other Otome series I've seen. It's focusing more on the fantastical element of it, the sort of fantasy adventure uh, tone of the series, uh, so if you're looking for something you know, more along those uh, lines, where it's about, about a bunch of people, you know, on a big grand adventure in a fantasy world, uh, you'll get that with the Hundred Sleeping Princes. Perfectly reasonable animation budget, uh, and I like the personality of the characters. They didn't go too strongly on um, the uh, Atome cliches, which I appreciated. Uh, Angels of Death is the one of the big horror, probably the big horror anime series of the season. One of the big ones. Uh, basically about a, a girl about 12 or 13 who's trapped in a uh, creepy hospital with a bunch of psychopaths, basically. And so it seems to be kind of a battle royale sort of a show. She has to get out. Um, very, very creepy. Definitely trying to, to trade on, on horror vibes. There's a little bit of, of gore, but it's more psychological. It's more... Uh, you know, people coming after you um, think Day of the Dead. You know, that, that vibe where it, it, it's more um, trying to freak you out. Not only is there a, a good animation budget for this show, they've obviously thought through it a lot. The visual style, the camera angles, the design of the hospital, all of these things are very distinctive uh, and seem like part of a logical whole. So I was very impressed with that. This feels like one of the, you know, the higher budgeted shows of the season. Uh, and especially high budget in terms of just the entire package, which I really appreciated. Um, it's definitely an interesting one. Uh, also uh, interesting in terms of uh, animation, Angle Moi, which would be the, the French pronunciation. I don't know how you pronounce it in Japan. Um, Angle Moi, uh, Record of Mongol Invasion. It's about a group of, of people who wash up on the shores of Tsushima, which is basically the island between most of the islands of Japan and Korea, uh, just before the attempted Mongol invasion of Japan. So if you're looking for something more historical, and this does seem very uh, historically researched, you'll get it in Angle Moi. Also high animation budget and very distinctive visual style. In fact, this, this poster is pretty similar uh, to the visual style of the show. Quite dark, uh, very few bright colors, and uh, kind of a, a subdued color palette. And just very, very distinctive. They're, they're definitely trying something different. Also, like, there's this weird, like, paper filter over the entire show. Like, it is just filtered. The, the entire video. It's very, very weird. Um, so, definitely a, a little more high concept. A lot of cool action animation in this. And um, uh, just one of those really interesting s series. And also, there's already been, in the first episode, some interesting character elements and, and character moments about motivation and whether that motivation is reasonable or not, that kind of stuff. Really like that. Um, moving on to Asobi Asobase, which is kind of the light, fluffy anime series of the season. Well, one of a couple. Um, I can't remember much of anything about this, about the plot of this episode, because it's basically cute high school girls hanging out and um, you know promising things and then being embarrassed because they can't actually fulfill them and trying to you know backpedal and all that kind of normal high school girl stuff. Very, very light and fluffy, very sweet, um, very much a school life kind of a, a comedy. You know, it fits exactly into that mold. If you're looking for a 
light school life series. It's kind of that. Kind of Lucky Star-ish, although not as ridiculous over the top. Then there's Backstreet Girls, Goku Dolls, which is very much over the top. Basic concept is a group of three Yakuza who have failed the, the Yakuza so badly. They've gotten in such big trouble with the Yakuza that they have been ordered to go undergo gender reassignment surgery and become a pop idol group, um, a teen girl pop idol group for the Yakuza. So the joke is that they are, um, you know, they have the, the, the bodies and faces and, and voices of teen girls, older teen girls, uh, but they, you know, in private, they act like 30-year-old men who are kind of disgusted with their lot in life. Uh, I'm not aware of anywhere where it's streaming. I haven't even seen a translation of it yet, so I had to kind of go based off of my very, very uh, mild knowledge of a little bit of Japanese. Very over the top, very ridiculous, and very much playing off of the, the juxtaposition of, you know, cute girls with this uh, attitude towards life, and zero animation budget. Just almost nothing. You'll get lip flaps. You might get a character. If a character is drinking, you might get, you know, this motion up and down of them gulping something down. That's it. It's incredibly cheap. Uh, so it, it is hard to kind of recommend in that sense. And it's, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's a tough one. But it is, it's out there. It's ridiculous. I'm sure somebody will uh, sub it at some point. And um, maybe it'll kind of come together. Uh, one of the more um, look forward to series of this season is Banana Fish, based on a, a manga from the 80s about a, a young Japanese man who is pulled into the world of a dangerous street gang, basically. Uh, definitely one of these more seinen stories, you know, not goofy, not over the top. It is about, you know, people, like real people dealing with real people problems. I was very impressed with this show. Um, it feels like a, a, a Bebop or a Wolf's Rain or even like a Satoshi Kon story. Um, in fact, I think Satoshi Kon is a, is a better view of it, but without the Satoshi Kon sort of um, uh, fantasy aspect of it where there'll always be some odd twist, this is more grounded in reality. And as such, it's very interesting, you know, to me, look at, you know, street gang life and what what it's like to live in that environment um, and why you would. So feels very socially relevant, feels um, like they're trying to do something that's important, for lack of a better term. Uh, definitely impressive. Uh, the, the manga I know was hugely popular back in the day and they made some changes to it, um, but they're trying to adapt it pretty, pretty closely. Um, then there's one of the, the, the big popular shows of this season, Cells at Work. Uh, which is about personifications of the human body, uh, the, the cells that work in the human body. So red blood cells are these delivery people in red jackets and hats who run around all the time. And there are white blood cells who are constantly fighting off, um, you know, parasites and, and germs and such. Um, it's definitely a, you know, a, fundamentally a, a light comedy series with an educational aspect to it. You're not, meant to, you're not meant to take this at all seriously. Uh, and if you sit back and just enjoy it as that, it's a really fun show. Uh, the platelets are adorable. They're these little little children that run around doing stuff. It's, uh, it's one of these concepts that doesn't seem like it would work, but oh my gosh, it works. It has a very high animation budget. Well, a relatively high animation budget. I mean, it's not super, super high, but definitely high enough to, to show a lot in that show. And it works. It's just kind of everything comes together for this show to be a fun, educational, um, light show. Then there's Shio's School Road, another comedy of the season. Uh, it's about a <laughs> schoolgirl who's just trying to get to school every morning. And every morning something comes up. Now, I was afraid it would be more over the top. It would be, you know, and now aliens invade. And now... Uh, a movie company has set up a, you know, a, a movie uh, uh, set in the middle of the road. It's not quite that ridiculous, um, but it is, as a result, more about how she's reacting to things and, you know, she's trying to get over here and so she, this happens and so she observes other people doing things, and get, interacts with other people. Um, 
it's it's a bit more grounded, which I, I think works better for this kind of a concept. And um, it's just a fun, upbeat comedy. Nothing particularly um, dramatic or, or complicated. But because it is more about these little vignettes of her trying to get to school, it can be a little bit more about the human condition, a little bit more about uh, people treating other people in different ways. I, I, I kind of like that. Uh, um, I, I thought it was um, a little more than I, I thought it would be. In contrast, Grand Blue, which I saw this poster and I thought, okay, cool. It's going to be about a young man at the beach, a um, group of young men at the beach, and they all have you know cute girlfriends and they all uh, run around in bathing suits. Uh, turns out it is about a young man who moves to the beach, uh, moves to a, uh, you know, live with his family, uh, you know, distant relatives who you know, are on the beach. Um, and he is immediately surrounded by uh, men who like to strip down and get drunk and have these, you know, wild parties. And he's trying to um, uh, do the whole university thing and keeps getting distracted by these guys to get him drunk. And so, unfortunately, the, the, the joke of episode one is these guys keep getting him drunk, and he ends up in ridiculous situations as a result of being drunk. In fact, there's a whole disclaimer at the beginning about, you know, we do not rec recommend underage drinking, and this is a comedy, and it's not real life. Um, but it felt very one note, and it felt very much over-the-top kind of forced comedy, where you know, they have this one gag, and they're just going to beat it into the ground, unfortunately. Um, Animation is sort of middle of the road. There definitely could be more, um, but for a a comedy of this scale, you don't necessarily need a lot of animation. So I, I guess they're going in that direction. Um, but definitely very little in the way of uh, of fans. I mean, a lot of naked men. Um, not much in the way of of girls. And unfortunately, the naked men are generally treated as comedy. Um, so I don't know that that girls are necessarily going to be too turned on by that. Uh, so I don't know. But uh, definitely disappointing for me, but because I was looking for something a little more, um, um, a little more celebratory of life, and a little, bit, a little bit less, you know, guys getting other guys drunk. Oh well. Uh, moving on to one of the two big um, sports shows of the season, Hanabado, a badminton anime, which turns out to be one of the most intense anime of the season. Oh my gosh, these girls are care. Particularly one girl is very intense. Um, this. This poster does not get across the intensity of this first episode. My gosh. A um, lot of very impressive attention to lighting and color. And, um, you know, evening feels like evening. It doesn't just feel like day with, different, with, a, with a different, you know, color shader on everything. They've really paid a lot of attention to this show. Uh, and they're really trying to make it feel like quality. Um, wide variety of characters. Um, really hard to see where this is going. I think it's, it's one of those shows where you're, you're either going to be in or you're going to be out because it is an, an intense show about girls playing badminton. Um, and then it starts following kind of you know, the formula. Um, and so I'm, I'm definitely, in, I was definitely intrigued by it. I was surprised by the, the tone of it and the, just the attention to, to, to detail of this show is remarkable. Really interesting direction and editing as, as, as well and pacing. Um, uh, but it's kind of an, an odd approach to a badminton show. Speaking of odd approaches, Happy Sugar Life. Not streaming anywhere. And I don't want to tell you much of anything about this because there is a big twist in episode one that is kind of meant to be a twist, so I'm not going to spoil that. Um, except to say that this appears to be a very light, happy, fun, sugary show uh, about a, a girl who's taking care of another girl, and then there's a twist. Um... I found the show to ultimately be... There's a cynicism to the show and the twist, which... Um, and, and the general tone of the show post-twist, which just turned me off very strongly. Um, so, might appeal to you, might work for you. Um, and definitely trying to be kind of a Madoka Magica sort of a show where, oh, everything seems happy. Not so much. But that certainly has an audience, and that certainly works for some people, and it, it is certainly very much... I mean, it, it, it doesn't feel cheap. It feels like they are writing this and planning this out and going somewhere with all of these elements. So good on them. We'll see where, where, where it goes. 
Um, but uh, definitely, I think this is going to be one of the more divisive shows of the season if anyone happens to catch it. Uh, then there's Harukana Receive, a girls' beach volleyball anime series. So it's about cute teen girls wearing bikinis. That's the show. That That is the show. Um, you know, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a, a you know, nice show. It, it, in fairness, like, it manages to, to, to capture just the right tone where... Th- there's a an effervescence to it. It it, it feels like a, a a cold soda, where it's refreshing. You enjoy yourself. Um, it's not deep. It's not complex. There's enough flavor there to keep you you know enjoying yourself. You know, but it's not filling in any way, shape, or form. And that's fine. It's not meant to be. And there's Homes of Kyoto, which is a little weird because people are gonna think that and say, oh, Sherlock Holmes show. A little bit, not quite. Uh, it is about a young man who works in an antique shop appraising antiques. And he's extremely good at it and has used those skills to be able to deduce things about other people and situations. So he has that kind of Sherlock Holmes-like quality of deduction. And as a result, people call him Holmes-san. The um, other main character is this young woman who uh, works part-time in the the place. And uh, he's kind of helping... Um, he, he appears to be kind of teaching her um, his methods of deduction. She's not a Watson per se, um, but she's more filling that role of sidekick who can be the person who is asking the question the audience would know. Um, but the personalities are, are not quite the same. One of the things I really like actually is the main character, the, the, the Holmes character. He's not a sociopath. Uh, he's not this kind of superhero. Uh, he just has this really remarkable power of deduction. Uh, but he's just kind of this pretty normal young man, which is, which is kind of cool. I watched the first two episodes of this, actually, and uh, it's not all about appraising art. Uh, he's sort of... Different people start asking him to help out with various problems, uh, and it's not, you know, murder. You know, it's not grand theft. Uh, it's m- more mundane stuff like that, which allows the stories to be more... a little more grounded, and they seem to be original. Like, I, I, I don't know... I haven't noticed yet any obvious connections to any of the classic Holmes stories. So um, it, it's more Holmes as basic concept, but definitely taking it, taking it in its own direction. Perfectly effective animation uh, quality. Nothing to write home about there. I really like the art style, actually. It's a, it's a little bit more um, uh, soft and light. Uh, and it is very much set in Kyoto. And, and there's quite a bit in the, the show, actually, about the personality of that city and what it's like growing up there, which is kind of cool. One of the, moving on to one of the other isekai series of this season, How Not to Summon a Demon Lord, uh, focuses on a young man who is a neat, very much a shut-in, who uh, is very high level in his MMO, then is summoned into a, another world, which happens to be a, uh, essentially a, a copy of the MMO he was in. So the races and all those, those things are like what uh, his MMO but he now is now inhabiting his physical body. The two girls who summoned him got the spell wrong, and so instead of him being, uh, you know, kind of attached to them, they are attached to him and kind of you know have to serve him, so to speak. So they're they're looking for ways to turn that around. Because he's because as a high level character, he was very imperious. That is the personality he kind of adopts by nature. So as a result, he has this very cool, commanding personality and attitude even though inside he's not having that reaction. So a lot of the comedy comes from that. Uh, and so very quickly he starts assembling his harem. It's clearly going to be one of those sorts of shows. Um, I do like the fact that his personality makes him um, react to things a little more normally than some shonen characters do. And you get to see kind of those those reactions in him. But it doesn't mean that his, you know, the Demon Lord character necessarily has those reactions. So you don't get that weird thing where... You know, a regular person would run screaming, right? Because um, yeah, you know, he wants to run screaming, but he knows how he should react in the situation as this this powerful character. Um, you know, it's an isekai series. It's an isekai harem series. It's very much following that that formula. Um, I liked it. Um, it didn't creep me out the way some of these isekai stories um, have in the past. So definitely, you know, in that middle ground. 
of doing it, doing it fine, but nothing hugely exceptional so far. Then there's Island, which is adapted from a visual novel. Feels like it's in that when they cry, you know, school days vibe where it is this, it's set in this out of the way place that seems idyllic, but there's some mysterious thing going on. I don't know what's going on. Um, it's, it's very vague and hinted at, but definitely high quality um, in terms of the animation uh, approach. And uh, you know, high animation budget, people, characters seem pretty on model much of the time and definitely mysterious, definitely some attractive girls, but it has that visual novel mystery vibe where it's like, we're gonna throw weird, you know, we're gonna throw cryptic stuff at you for a lot of this show before any of it makes sense. Um, and that's not a complaint, it's just one of those things where that, that, is, that is the formula they're gonna follow, it seems. Uh, you're just not gonna understand a lot of this until, until later on. Um, although they do reveal a few things in that first episode, so I don't think they're gonna, gonna really string you along. Um, but definitely in, that, in that, that mode of everything seems fine until you find out about the horrible murders or whatever. Um, moving on to one of the, the very light, over-the-top, you know, goofy anime series of the season, Dropkick on My Devil, uh, about a group of monster girls who are all living together and constantly getting into arguments and fighting. This is just screwball comedy. That's what it is. Uh, and it kind of goes there at times, kind of surprisingly... Uh, the characters sometimes, uh, one of the characters gets kind of killed over and over. It's one of those sorts of stories. Uh, very, very weird. Um, I, I found the personalities to be fun to watch. I wouldn't necessarily mainline this show in the sense of I wouldn't necessarily want to watch this for hours and hours and hours. But as a, a, a diversion, it's, you know, it's a dessert. It's candy. It's fun. Um, and, and diverting, um, not very, very little in the way of sub substance, but a, a really fun snack. Then there's Lord of Vermilion, The Crimson King. I can't remember a single thing about this show. Mr. Tonagawa Middle Management Blues is a show about, it's actually a spinoff of Kaiji, very popular shonen series. And indeed the first, I don't know, third of the, the episode, the first episode, is a summary of what happened in Kaiji, uh, the plot of Kaiji, and why Mr. Kotonogawa is important, because he was one of the bosses, if you will, in Kaiji, which Kaiji is about this young man who always ends up in these ridiculous contests, these sort of contests to the death, if you will, and how he navigates those. And Mr. Kotonogawa is this sort of Yakuza boss who was his big, one of his big rivals. Turns out that um, running the Yakuza is not easy, and so this is about his stresses and frustrations in, in running a, a group of Yakuza. Ridiculous concept, very over-the-top comedy. Uh, unfortunately, the, the art style of Kaji, the, Kaiji, the, the character designs are very distinctive. You can't really see it very well in this poster. It is weird, and the humor is kind of odd in tone. I enjoyed watching it, but it's definitely an acquired taste. It's a bit like Gintama, if you will, where, again, goofy, over-the-top comedy, um, and definitely its own unique spin on lots of different things, um, and, and on um, just how it does its comedy and so forth. So, not a bad show, but just a little out there. Um, also, mm, mediocre animation budget. Yeah. Then, the idol pop uh, show of the season... If you're familiar with, you know, Idol Girls or, you know, a or I I'm sorry, Idol Master or any of those pop idol shows, it is exactly that. Here is your group of characters. Choose the, the one you like. This is the, the one with the, you know, oddball personality. Here is the Yamato Nadeshko. Here is, it's all there. Um, and it's cute and it's fun and they sing and they dance. Uh, the twist is that there's a, a girl who comes in who can, uh, well, I won't, I won't re uh, reveal the twist. Uh, there is a really funny reveal at the very end of the episode, which you know, we laughed out loud at. Um, so th there is some thought into it. It's not completely paid by, paid by numbers, but if you're looking for an idol show, that is what this is. If you don't want an idol show, you're not going to like this show. <laughs> it's just, that is it. I will say one of the interesting things is they are like a 
bottom ranked C tier uh, pop idol group. So they're definitely struggling to to go somewhere. Um, you know, more so than a lot of the idol groups out there, where you know they're they're not hugely popular at the beginning, but they're they're a little bit higher than you know uh, where where the girls are in music girls. Then a Phantom in the Twilight, another Otome series of this season. Uh, girl kind of stumbles upon this cafe that happens to be run by hot boys who are secretly you know vampire, werewolf, ghost, things like that, and they actually go out and hunt monsters. So it is more of a supernatural action story, which I like quite a lot. Um, also, there's more going on. There, there's quite a bit of, of plot and backstory to the show, which I really appreciated. So um, I kind of expected it to be a little more uh, you know, romantic, um, you know, a little bit more, oh, they're hot guys being hot guys. Not so much. Uh, it, is a, it is a show about these characters fighting, which was, was, was rather, rather nice. And uh, I like the character designs. Um, it, it's a little bit more um, grounded, a little, little more seinen, if you will, than all these other other um, other stories. Good animation budget, especially for the action. And again, I like the, the there's there's some story, there's some um, explanation for what for all is going on. Speaking of which, Planet With. Uh, I happen to be a big fan of the creator of Planet With, who created and did uh, 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 wrote and drew. Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer and Spirit Circle. And, uh, and then created this, did the character designs for it. And that author has this tendency to start with what appears to be a very standard shonen formula, but then go significantly deeper with it than you would expect. And by that I mean, like, the setup for the shonen th thing is often kind of just a setup, but that often turns out to be very important for the psychology of the characters and important for the the themes being explored in the show. And Planet With is very much that. One of the things it is doing it is, is it is very much juxtaposing odd imagery. There is some weird stuff in this first episode uh, and it, it I'm sure it's going to turn a lot of people really far off, but I am certain that, that is very much intentional in the sense that, you know, it's not just weird for being weird. All of this oddity is going somewhere. This is the mecha series of the season. So if you're looking for mecha series, this is going to be it for this season. There's definitely a twist at the end of the first episode. Uh, all is not as, as it appears. It's set in this very odd um, sort of modern world, but where there are you know, uh, Power Ranger type heroes going off to save the world. It's an odd one. Um, I really, I, I thought the, the animation budget was, was, is pretty high the art style is somewhat stylized in terms of how people move and and uh it's it's a little bit more sort of naruto movement and i'm intrigued I, it, it definitely feels like a, a, a first episode where it feels kind of rocky it, it feels like it's trying to set up so it has to set up so much to get where it's going that you just don't know where you are by the end of the first episode and that's just kind of what this kind of show has to be, but it's going to kind of accelerate up to, to an ending. And it might fall apart of the ending, but it's definitely going somewhere. This author does not just throw things together and run with it. It's going to be very planned. So I'm intrigued where, to see where Planet With is going. Um, but if it's not for you, totally understand. Uh, another Isekai series this season, The Master of Ragnarok and Blesser of Einharjar, which is about a young man who is transported to a... Um, Actually, not a fantasy world. It appears to be Bronze Age Earth, Bronze Age Europe, actually. Um, so maybe four or five thousand years ago. Except it's clearly not because several of the characters have crazy magical powers. So I don't know where it's going with that. But one of the interesting things is it does kind of deal with the fact that the main character, so the main character, his cell phone still works. And there's apparently some explanation, you know, for all of that. Um... And so he can, like, look up information on the internet. So he does things like introduce a new method of grinding grain um, and certain, certain technologies, and he's starting to introduce iron. Uh, one, one, and I should point out one of the reasons this all makes sense. Thankfully, the, the first episode is not an origin story. It starts with him in the world. Everything's already set up. The opening credit sequence shows in kind of flashes 
what happened to bring him to the world. You get in a sense of, of how that all happened. And so this is more about the situation he's in and how he's trying to sort of manage all of these relationships and the, the, the situation uh, that he's been put in. So he's already confident. He already knows what he's trying to do and is trying to accomplish it, which I really, really appreciate. It, it's not stranger in a strange land. Uh, he's established and trying to grow from there. So that's an interesting twist. Um, it's definitely a harem show. You know, there are all these girls who pledged themselves to him. Um, so there's a slightly creepy factor there. Um, so that can certainly turn some, some folks off. Um, but I, I, I'm intrigued by the directions it's taking with kind of that the isekai formula. And um, it has a perfectly decent animation budget. You know, it's different and it's interesting. So, you know, worth a check out if any of that is uh, appealing or remarkable to you. We want to review Starlight. Speaking of remarkable, my gosh. This is about a group of girls, you know, teen girls, who are going to a famous ballet company that puts on big reviews. So if you're familiar with the Takara Zuka review, uh, an all-female uh, group that puts on these big sort of, um, uh, these big uh, musical stage plays, it's very much like that. And there's a lot of very interesting visuals in terms of, of direction and editing yeah, there's this amazing sequence where the girls are all they're all showing up um, in the morning for their first ballet class of the day and you see how they're entering and how th yeah, how they move how they talk all this kind of stuff and kind it of reveals a lot it feels much more adultly made in the sense where you know they're definitely trying to be stylistic and they're trying to be trying to take this seriously um, now obviously it's a you know there's a significant amount of teen girls in leotards um, so there's only so much you can you can take that but then, it gets weird. And I'm talking revolutionary girl, no, weird. There's a whole big competition thing involving girls going through this, this dance sequence and like leaping halfway across a giant auditorium. I'm not sure where this show is going. And my gosh, the animation budget is insane. Movie quality animation. I don't know where they're going with this, um, but I was really, really impressed and intrigued. It's going places, um, and I mean, it, it may go in really crazy, weird, and ultimately useless places. But hey, I'm you know I I, I want to see more, which is always a, a you know, good idea. So who knows where that's going? But definitely, definitely an odd one. Speaking of odd, The Thousand Musketeers, another Otome series, although there's no real central girl character. Instead, it's set in a future in which an oppressive uh, world government has taken away the right to bear arms. And so ordinary people cannot uh, you know, own and wield weapons, and as a result, uh, the world has turned into this dystopia. Fortunately, um, muskets are still around, and so people fight with these muskets. Now, these characters here are actually... Muskets brought to life. I don't understand it either. Um, but they, are, they also are, have to be brought to life as very hot young men. And they go and they, they fight and shoot, you know, tires on jeeps. And they, they, they fight in these skirmishes with these crazy world powers. Insane concept. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, it, it, there's quite a bit of comedy actually in it. Although it is definitely set in this dystopian future where they're fighting back against, you know, uh, an oppressive regime uh, using the only guns available to them. It's, you know, it's, I would not be surprised if this was like sponsored by the Japanese NRA, um, which would be weird because that wouldn't make it all sense. Uh, but yeah, it, it's an odd one. Pretty high animation budget, a lot of attention paid to different military styles and um, because they're each a musket from a different era and a different place in the world, they actually wear uniforms from that era and place. So this is a French Legionnaires, you know, uniform. So forth. a lot of attention paid to this one. Weird premise. Um, I just, yeah, I kind of don't know what to think about this one. It's, but it's pretty. It's fun. You know, it's cool. Then the creepiest show of the season, Suno Haroso no Kanrinrin san which is not streaming anywhere, thankfully. It is about, the, the entire first episode, pretty much, focuses on an adult who consistently 
makes inappropriate sexual uh, advances and physical touches on a middle school student. That's the entire first episode. But it's a woman doing it to a young boy. So apparently it's funny. Uh, um, so basically this, uh, the, the boy who you see in the, in the middle there, uh, has always been kind of, he's always been very passive and quiet. And people have, have, have frequently, uh, growing up, mistaken him for a girl. And he's kind of trying to change that. He's now moving into this, this dorm. But the, the dorm mother, who is this uh, woman with very large breasts, um, keeps grabbing on to him and holding on to him and, um, uh, and uh, talking to him, talking about how cute he is. And even when he asks her to stop doing all that, she just keeps doing it. And it's meant to be funny. It just feels inappropriate. It really, really does. Um, I like some of the other characters. Uh, there's a sort of a, 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 a Tundere Loli. There's um, a variety of other characters. It's clearly meant to be fun and not taken seriously, but it is that joke is so prevalent in episode one, you know, it became clear that that was kind of, that they saw no problem with it, and it just became creepy. I don't know what to say. Um, animation's okay. Characters are okay. But, yeah. In contrast, Sirius the Jaeger. Oh my gosh. If you haven't had a chance to check this one out. If you like the high-budget action animation of a Cowboy Bebop or Wolf's Reign. Um, if you're into, you know, more Seinen-style storytelling, like a Bacano. Um, if you're looking for something that is just obviously aimed at an older audience, um, but also has some amazing action animation, that is Sirius the Jaeger. It is set in the early 20th century, I believe 1915, in Japan. Um, it deals a bit with what Japan was like back then. Uh, and uh, But there's definitely a sort of a fantasy twist to it. Oh, uh, this feels like, I don't know, it feels like a Shinichiro Watanabe anime. And it's not. Uh, the director is a long-term animator, you know, key animator, and this feels like kind of an animation celebration. There's just so much butter-smooth action animation in this first episode, my jaw was on the floor. Uh, it's beautiful, really interesting visual style, um, a little more dark, a little more uh, grounded visually. Oh, this is a, a gift to uh, people like me who are big fans of animation, qua animation. Um, hard to tell where the story's going to go, you know, as you can see, like half a dozen main characters and then some villains, uh, but it looks, looks, looks quite interesting. Also interesting, Seven Senses of the Reunion. Basic plot, and I'm going to have to explain what happens in episode one because that is kind of the, the, the blurb. Uh, the main characters are all in an MMO. It's not a chapter in an MMO series thus far, but uh, they're all grade schoolers who uh, are in this, this guild, basically, uh, in this MMO which has one particular twist that it has permadeath. So if your character reaches zero HP, the character dies and cannot be revived. You have to start, create a new character and start over. Uh, but you can, you can do that. Um, and it's also designed so that, like, that doesn't stop you from playing the game. Like, it is, it is not hard for a higher-level character and a lower-level character to play together. They just have to kind of be more careful. Um, so these grade schoolers have been playing it, and they've, gotten, they've done very well in the game. Uh, one day, the boy who's more or less leading the group gets really excited about, um, he wants to fight this very, very tough boss. They don't really want to do it, but they go ahead with him anyway. The boss battle goes poorly. I will say they do a really impressive job of showing off how the different characters are doing different things in the battle, and how this person's supporting this, this person with that, and they need this summon so they can, you know, do this buff on this other character. Uh, they do this all quite naturally, but it goes poorly. And one of the girls ends up throw, you know, throwing herself in front of one of the other characters um, uh, and basically takes an, a, a, an, a disintegration ray in the face and she drops to zero HP and her character, you know, vanishes and, she, you know, her character's dead. And she's like, ah, oh, that sucks. So they all have to back out, of course. And then she doesn't respond to texts or, or phone calls. And so, um, so they're like, ah, oh, she's really, you know, upset. So then they, they go over to her house and find out that uh, when her character died, she had a heart attack. And she died. Grade school girl. 
they attend her funeral, and at least one of the kids like blames the leader for like if we hadn't if you hadn't insisted we went on that, that raid, she'd still be alive right now. Fast forward about five years uh, to that main boy, who's now maybe fifteen or so. The game has has now released a sequel. And some of his friends ask him to, to be part of this. And he, he's not had a great time of it. He, he's clearly um, much more somber than he was. And so he finally agrees to log in and help them with a quest. They go through the quest. At the end of the quest, there's a chest, big chest. He opens the chest, and inside is the avatar of the girl who died, who wakes up and looks at him and says, Oh, hey, Subaru. Credits. You know, is somebody playing her character? What's going on? They know she's dead. So that's a weird one. Um, I, I don't know where it's going. Um, you know, animation quality is up there. You know, all the pieces are there. Uh, it's, they're, they're thankfully, again, not trapped in an MMO, which I was worried about. And I think it's going to be more about this big mystery of what's going on with this girl and what, why, ooh. Odd. So it, I think it's going to have that feel of Anohana, where there's a weird thing going on, and we all got to figure out what that weird thing is, uh, among a group of, of people who are, who have a very awkward relationship with each other. So we'll see, but definitely one of the surprises of the season. Uh, finally, Yuna and the Haunted Hot Springs. This is the harem anime of the season. Uh, I, funnily enough, this show, this this series actually got Shonen Jump in some hot water not that long ago. The main character is a very typical shonen teen hero. He practices a form of what he calls hands-on exorcism, which means he punches ghosts in the face and then they pass on to the next world. So he just does that and he punches, you know, that, that happens. And he hears about this haunted, this, this hot springs that is haunted by this, you know, uh, uh, student who drowned. And so he goes to this hot spring, which has this very cheap room, to find out that the, the spirit in question is this very sweet teenage girl. Don't know quite why she drowned herself. Or why she drowned, I should say. We don't know if it's suicide. And, um, and she's very nice. Uh, and also easily flustered, which tends to cause her to telekinetically levitate the character you know, and throw him out of the window. Um, if you're familiar with harem anime, that's exactly what this is. Uh, the hot springs also has... A handful of um, you know other girl boarders who all happen to be voluptuous and wander around in various states of undress. It's it's a harem anime. It's exactly what it is. Um, and the, the twist is he can't bring himself to punch the you know sweet girl in the face, but other exorcists start showing up, so he has to defend her from those. So there, that's the shonen aspect. Um, it's a harem series. It is I you know. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. There's nothing too special about it. Uh, it is very much executing on that formula. But, you know, if that's, if that's your bag, you're going to find something that definitely um, ticks all the boxes for a harem series. So that's all the shows I watched this season for summer 2018. Hope you found this useful. And uh, I'll be watching some more. I'm also going to make up a, a video on the shows that I am keeping up with or planning to keep up with this season, the ones that kind of caught my eye. And I hope you found this useful, and we'll be back again for, uh, for the fall in three months. Hope to see you then.